What's up YouTube family? This is Jeff with a little bit of everything home services coming to you with another video and uh, today I am on a commercial building where I am about to start up a piece of equipment. Check it out. Okay family so today I will be starting up this Mitsubishi unit right here and uh, you know the great thing about the good thing about uh, the installers they left a note on here for me. Uh, so the unit is currently under 450 PSI, 450 pounds of pressure um, of nitrogen. So that lets me know how much nitrogen hold is on this unit. And the purpose of that is um, to make sure the unit is, is not leaking. Make sure there are no leaks and it hasn't lost um, pressure. So I'm about to take the cover off and check and see... Um, what the pressure is holding at and go from there and I'll be using my uh, true blue holes today and my and the NAVVAC um, battery operated vacuum pump because my other vacuum pump uh, is currently on another job pulling a vacuum so I brought this one with me all right YouTube family time to get with it okay family so I have removed the cover as you can see and this is an actual three ton unit that I'm about to um, go through the startup procedure with. And how do I know it's a three ton unit? Look down here, you see those numbers right there? You see that 36 right there? 36 and divided by 12 and I get three. So I know that this is a three ton unit. All right, so I'm gonna check the nitrogen hold on here. Now, you gotta understand, the unit comes pre-charged with refrigerant. So, um, this right here, this is the only port you want to check because I am, it, it has refrigerant everywhere else. From here is running to the cassette. These running down to the cassette downstairs. Every, this is right, this in here is, is ports to the condensing unit. There's refrigerant in there. So if I put my gauges on either one of these, I am going to read pressure as far as refrigerant. I want to read the charge, the nitrogen hold that's on this unit. So the only place I can check that is right here. And this the suction line doesn't have a port on it like this one. So I can only check it right here at the liquid line where I can check where the pressure is. But from here to here, these two they're running to the indoor cassette. So I can check it and I want to do all that and pull a vacuum on this system, release that nitrogen, pull a vacuum on the system, but I want to do so um, I want to do it and not contaminate the refrigerant so I don't want to open up these ports right here I'm going to open none of this up until after I'm done pulling the vacuum let the nitrogen out pull the vacuum and all that good stuff all right YouTube family I'll be right back all right so I have my Testo wireless gauge hooked up to it to check the nitrogen pressure right now there is 374 pounds of pressure and uh, I lost quite a bit of pressure when I was putting this this gauge on here because I mean when you put it on there nitrogen is coming out you know get it on as fast as I can but hey hey oh well, I didn't have uh, my low loss with me so I mean I got it on there as fast as I could best I could so but anyway it is holding nitrogen charge as you can see 374 so what I'm going to do I'm gonna release the nitrogen out of the system so I can start pulling the vacuum on all right so I hook the hose up to it and I'm just going to release the rest of this nitrogen pressure. It's not a lot of difference between here and there. Now what I am going to do family is I am going to remove the schrader from here when I'm pulling the vacuum. So I'm going to remove the schrader, pull the vacuum with the NAVVAC and it'll pull down in no time. I, I don't like pulling vacuums with straighter to with the straighter still in. It's just so much faster um, to do it the other way. So that's just my practice. That's what I do. I try to do it every time. And then on this particular, because it's three times you have the room, I have the room to be able to hook up my um, straighter removal tool, remove it. That's one thing you want to make sure that you have the room. A lot of times you have space limitations when it comes to. Uh, hooking up a removal tube but in this particular case I don't I don't think I do anyway let's let's check it out and see so am I gonna have enough room in here family 
Look at that. Yes, I'm gonna have enough room to use this straighter removal tool, hook it up here, and I'll remove that. So I am going to remove. I'm about to pull a vacuum on this unit, and briefly, I want to discuss for those. I probably cut this part of the video for for those who don't want to know, but um, this is a straighter removal tool. If you don't know. All right, so the purpose of the straighter removal tool is to remove the straighter from the valve so you can uh, access that flow faster. You have a larger diameter to pull a vacuum out of or refrigerant out of or whatever instead of trying to pull it through that little bit of straighter. So, and there's my straighter. Now, one thing that I can see about this straighter, look at there, it needs to be replaced. It's a bent. So I'm not going to be able to put this back in there like that, you know, so I am going to replace this straighter. Now, if I didn't have, um, there was no pressure, I could just use this and take it out alone. I wouldn't have to have the tool there. So, but since it's bent, I am going to replace it. All right. So, and as you can see, I released the handle there. There's nothing in this particular system, you know, because I already let the nitrogen out. All right, it's good and tight on there. So now I am going to get ready to get my vacuum ready. And with my pump, I'm going to change the oil right quick. I always change the oil every single time prior to uh, using my pump. And for those of you who don't know how to change the oil, or, you know, haven't had an opportunity to do that yet, you know, this is an oil caddy. Get you one. It comes in really, really handy for changing oil. So here's my pump. So there's oil. You see the oil level in there. I'm just gonna open this up. Now, when you're using this caddy, make sure you don't drop this into the hole. This doesn't hold a whole lot of oil. Because it's a small 4 CFM vacuum pump. Alright, so now I pour the oil out there. I want to add oil here at the top. So I'm going to be using the Robin Air vacuum pump oil today. That's what I have in stock with me. And if you get the small one, it already has the cap with it that comes with it. And it always have, already have a little hole in it. But it's a small hole, so you might want to make it bigger. But let's see. This is a small hole, so uh, let's see here. Let me turn it around so I can see as it feels. Whoa. All right. Let me move this caddy out the way. And this hole is just too small. It's going to take so long to get that out, so... I'm gonna cut this hole and make it a little bigger. All right, that's a little bit better. Well, not a little bit, that's a whole lot better. All right, and you wanna watch this field line right here and put, put vacuum oil to the middle line. Just kinda gotta watch it as you go. Now, I could've used the, the, the pump, the bottle that came with it, which is much easier than using this thing. Pouring it in this little hole, trying not to make a mess. Still not quite there yet. Alright, so now a vacuum pump's ready to go. And as you can see, the fuel line right there. See it? Alright. Alright, family, so now I'm gonna hook the true blue hose up to the unit here. Alright, so I'm gonna use the hose that has the quarter inch to go here and the half inch to go on the pump. I don't have another port to hook my micron gauge up to it. 
but uh, I'm also I'm gonna have to do what I don't want to do, and that's hook the micron gauge up to the pump. Actually, no, I'm gonna hook the micron gauge up to the side port. You never want to hook it up to the pump. And uh, I don't want to do that, but and I really don't want to hook it up there, but this up here, but this is a better option. And at least hooking it up to this side right here, I uh, it won't shut off the micron gauge. Like when I close this port right here, it'll still keep reading. It doesn't close off from the side. It just closes off from the top. So, this is my vacuum gauge that I'm using today, the, J the JB. So right now we are at 80,000 microns. All right, so right now it just started and it's just pulling the vacuum on the hose right here because I haven't opened up the valve right here on the shredder removal tool. Now that I hear it ramped up and pulling, I'm going to open it up. You hear the change? Look at that, it's pulling down. Already down 60, 50,000. Well, I guess you let you get a closer look here. So, one, take a look at the vacuum pump. See how it's releasing? If you can see it in the video. So let's get a closer look at the microns. It went from 80,000 micron, it's already down to 5,000. See how fast it's pulling? And I'm just telling you, family, the hoses makes the difference. Removing the Schrader, one, removing the Schrader from, from the unit, from that, from that valve, and then the diameter size of the larger diameter size holes that you use, the faster vacuum you can pull. So I'm able by doing this, I'm cutting my time down. Now while this is pull a vac pulling a vacuum, I'm gonna be documenting some of the information that I need for this startup. Like model and serial number and compressor model and serial number. I'm not gonna have a whole lot of time because this thing is pulling out fast. So that's what I'm doing while you look here, while it's pulling this vacuum, I am getting the information that I need. I'm getting the information off of this compressor because I'm gonna need it for my startup. So my back, the requirement is 500 microns. It's down to 310 microns. So at this point, I'm gonna close off, stop the pump. I'm going to close this off, this hose off. See, and I have to pause it to see where the to, to stop it to see where the microns really are really are because it's pulling right here so it was down to 350 but not really as you can see it was because it's pulling right you want to always pull further away from the system but I don't have a choice so I'll pause it stop it see it's at 1500 so I'm gonna start it back up But see, it's at 1,500 and it's holding. That's the good thing. It's at 1,500 and holding. 
So I'm gonna I'm gonna open this back up and let it continue to pull. And what I'll do is I'll close it off periodically to check and see where it, where it is. It's not gonna take any time to get this this vacuum pulled. So right here, even though it says 240 microns, it's because it's hooked right here. It's directly where it's pulling. So uh, in order for me to get the true, true microns, I have to close off the valve right here on the shredder removal tube. So it said 220, close it off. It said eight, it said eight, wait for it to settle. 1,050 microns, 1050. All right, let it keep going, let, my, let it keep going. I'm gonna let it keep pulling, even though it looks like it's down to 270, it's not really. It's just because, like I said, it's so close right here to where the vacuum, where the vacuum uh, pump is pulling. All right. Let's check on it. Close the sport off. All right. Let it settle. Six hundred. A little over six. Not quite there yet. Let's keep going. But this is going all the way down to the fourth floor. So I mean, this is still. I mean, this is doing great. I mean, you can't beat this at all. I've cut this job. I would have probably had to pull a vacuum on this job, on this this unit for probably about, if I didn't remove the shredders at all and I was using regular hoses and a regular manifold, probably about two hours, three hours maybe, about three, four hours is what I would have to pull the vacuum on. But now, I'm going to cut that down to about 30 to 40 minutes. All right, so I've achieved that back, I'm pretty sure. So I'm gonna stop this pump. Close the valve off here. And I'm sitting at 350. 350 microns initially. So I'm gonna document that initially. I'm gonna let it settle. All right, family, so my microns holding at 430. And uh, so all I have to do now, I have to release the ports to allow the refrigerant to flow. And I'm gonna release it at the valves right here. Hoses in the way, let me move it out the way there. So here and here, I'm gonna use an Allen wrench and, and open those up and allow refrigerant to flow. You wanna remove your micron gauge first because you, uh, you don't wanna get refrigerant on your gauge tip. All right, family, so I figured I have your tag along. I still got a lot of paperwork to do. I still have to check the indoor unit, uh, have to power all that on, check voltage, all that good stuff, complete paperwork. But I figured I would have you tag along a little bit just to show you um, some of the steps involved in starting up a, uh, a Mitsubishi a mini-split unit. All right, thank you, family. Talk to you soon. Have a blessed day.